John Boehner was the last Republican Speaker of the House before the Republican Party descended into Trumpism. John Boehner quit his job as Speaker of the House in the middle of a congressional session because he thought too many Republican House members had become disconnected from reality. When John Boehner walked off the Republican stage in disgust of his fellow Republicans in the House in October of 2015, Donald Trump was putting on a display of ignorance and buffoonery in Republican presidential debates unlike anything ever seen in American politics. And Donald Trump was constantly going up in the Republican polls. John Boehner could see that as impossible as his job had become in those days, it was very clear to him that Trumpism meant that it was only going to get worse. And so today, in an interview in Germany, former Republican Speaker of the House John Boehner said, most average Republicans are throwing up over the fact that the knuckleheads are running the show. John Boehner didn't list the knuckleheads by name, but one of the people running the show was asked today, about how the Republican tax cuts might run into trouble from a surprise tweet by the knucklehead in chief. Are you at all concerned that this rollout next week when you actually detail these tough choices that he's not going to maybe like some of them and tweet something about it? And he's going to be in Asia, number one. Number two, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of a joke. <laughs> I was just sort of joking on that one. Now, kind of a joke and sort of joking is not really a joke. So that means Paul Ryan was, you know, kind of saying what he meant, that the president's going to be in Asia, and he's implying that having the president out of town is the best thing for Republicans who are trying to get a tax bill passed. This week, Republican Senator Bob Corker said very clearly that he hoped the president would stop commenting on the tax bill. Is he yeah. being a distraction? Are the comments that he's making, the tweets, making it harder to get tax reform done? I would let the tax writing committees uh, do their work. Um, I think both the House and Senate has done a lot of preliminary work and stay out of taking things off the table and really ne negotiating against the process before it even begins. The chairman of the Senate tax writing committee is Utah Republican Orrin Hatch. Chairman Hatch said this, we need to know what the president wants to, to do to try to coordinate it with him. So far, I'm not quite sure where he's going. And no one is quite sure where the president is going in his newly announced war on opioids, a war that Republicans got interested in only when they discovered that white Republicans have serious addiction problems too. The basics of the president's announcement today on opioids was the familiar just say no. The fact is, if we can teach young people and people generally not to start, it's really, really easy not to take them. One specific action the president promised to take today was to pull a drug off the market. We are requiring that a specific opioid, which is truly evil, be taken off the market immediately. Okay, immediately, so like today or tomorrow at the latest, right? The administration confirmed that the drug that he was talking about was Opana. Apparently, no one told the president that that drug was already removed from the market in June by the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration has the regulatory authority to do that sort of thing. And that is exactly the kind of regulation that Donald Trump rails against. We're getting rid of one job-killing regulation after another. So the regulations are bad president told his regulations are bad believing followers today that he was going to use regulations to take a drug off the market that the FDA had, the FDA had already taken off the market thanks to regulations. Joining us now, Ron Klain, former chief of staff to Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore and a former senior aide to President Obama. Also with us, Daniel Dale, the Washington correspondent for the Toronto Star. And Peter Weiner, senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. He worked in the last three 
Republican administrations. Uh, and Ron, the knuckleheads are running the show. This is not something I've ever heard a previous Democratic Speaker of the House uh, look back at Washington and say about the people he left behind. Yeah, because it hasn't been true before. I mean, like watching Paul Ryan today and Republican leaders say they want Donald Trump not involved in tax reform it is like watching Shep and Curley saying that Mo isn't qualified to be a stooge. I mean, it is just craziness. And it's not a surprise, though, Lawrence. You have to remember, we all remember, that it was Donald Trump who really single-handedly botched the Republican effort to repeal Obamacare. He did the wrong things when the bill was in the House. He then said the House bill was too mean. He threatened Republican senators. You know, he was a one-man wrecking crew on that legislation. So it's no surprise that Paul Ryan wants him in Asia, if not someplace farther away, when the House does the work on this bill. Peter, compare that uh, to President George W. Bush uh, pushing uh, his tax cut bills that he was uh, obviously a very important force in. Yeah, well, President Bush got the tax cut bill through. He got education uh, through. He got Medicare prescription drugs through. He got a lot through. Uh, and other presidents have gotten a lot through. Uh, the anomaly here is Donald Trump and the Trump presidency and the Trump administration because they are utterly inept. Uh, but the, but the, the really the focal point of the ineptness is Donald Trump himself. He doesn't know anything and he doesn't care that he doesn't uh, know anything. It is an extraordinary thing. Uh, you know, your old boss, uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, in 1981 wrote a piece in the New York Times where he said the GOP has of a sudden become the party of ideas. 35 years later, they have become in large part the party of anti-ideas. There is a deep contempt um, for policy uh, and for ideas and for the intellectual side and the governance side of uh, politics that explains how Donald Trump got the nomination and now we're seeing it unfold in real time and there's a cost to it. And, and Peter, as you recall, uh, Senator Moynihan was opposed to most of the Republican ideas and what he was talking about was the failure of his own party at that time to meet the new Republican ideas That's of Reaganism right. with a new set of a new kind of energetic approach by Democrats. Uh, Daniel, how does it land in this White House? That when uh, you have a former Speaker of the House, Republican Speaker of the House, saying uh, the knuckleheads are running the show, is that just another, that land like another tweet to them? Because in any previous White House, it would be the most devastating comment made that year or, or that entire presidential term. I think we know from what we've seen of Trump in public that he himself will be raging about this. He'll be raging about former Senator Tom Coburn saying in the New York Times today that he has a personality disorder. We know that, that this bothers him personally. I think to the White House, though, it's, it's easy to dismiss this as the, you know, the, the grumbling of the, the establishment that he is supplanting. Um, so it's easy to spin it publicly. And I think they're used to everyone yelling at them. And I think privately, a lot of them know that a lot of these criticisms of the president and, and of the people he's put around him are true. But, you know, they've chosen to be there themselves and they're, they're trying to power through. Uh, we have a poll about uh, the knuckleheads running the show. This is the YouGov poll. It says 87 percent, to put that up there, 87 percent say that Donald Trump says things that are untrue. That's if you add up uh, everyone uh, there who says all the time, often, sometimes. Uh, on Republicans, it's actually 63%. So, uh, so, Ron, you've got a majority of Republicans uh, who, who answer the question, how often does Donald Trump say things that are untrue? And, you know, th this very big group there, 47% saying sometimes, 11% saying often, uh, they just accept that, apparently. I think they accept it. I think, obviously, Trump's core supporters accept it. But, Lawrence, we are starting to see, for the first time, really, in an unprecedented thing since Watergate, members of the president's own party, Bob Corker, Jeff Flake, John McCain, say that this man is just unqualified, unfit, unable to be president. And, uh, you know, we kind of let that slide by last week as if it was just normal to have senior members of the president's own party in the Senate say that the president of the United States is unfit to be president. It's not normal. It's extraordinary. And Trump's incompetence and erraticism is taking its toll. And even some Republicans now are speaking out. And, and Peter, I, I, I want to go back to the, the point you made about uh, what Senator Moynihan said about Ronald Reagan. It's a 
Barack Obama echoed it, actually, in his first presidential campaign. There came a moment where uh, Barack Obama talked about Reagan actually having the ideas right. that kind of dominated uh, in right. the 1980s in, in his era. Uh, and, and when we look at this era, uh, we're seeing uh, the, the one idea that seems to be clear enough to describe, uh, anyway, is tax cuts. Uh, but at the same time, there's a, a massive violation of an old Republican prin principle of not increasing the debt, not increasing uh, the deficit, which some Republicans have been willing to do under some circumstances. But this is the most flagrant version of it yet. And, and so I, I wonder how people will describe this period in Republicanism when it comes to ideas. Oh, it's it's going to be devastating. Uh, it, it's going to be that the cupboard was was uh, empty. As I said, it, it's, it's not simply they don't have the ideas. There seems to be within some parts of the Republican Party, certainly in the person of Donald Trump, a kind of contempt for ideas. They they view politics as theatrics, not politics as governance. And there's almost a prideful disdain uh, of it. We we saw it during the campaign. You know, during these. Um, debates, Donald Trump couldn't string together three coherent policy sentences. And this was not a state secret that he didn't know these things. It was advertised and people saw it and they didn't care about it. And there was something else about him, his personality and, and this theatrical side of politics, the grievance side of politics um, that attracted people. Donald Trump is a serious problem. He's president. But the fact that so many Republicans, the Republican base, were attracted to him and are staying committed to him, despite the fact that we know what he is like, um, is, is an even deeper problem in some respects. Ron Klain, Daniel Dale, Peter Weiner, thank you all for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank Thanks. You. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.